We are just about wrapped up with our $3,000 shootout between a modified 4.8 and a bone stock 8.1 big block. And we haven't heard the 4.8 fire up just yet, but today I think we're actually going to hear it run for the very first time, if all goes according to plan. Before we do that though, I have to get the headers installed on the engine. And that's not quite as simple as it sounds because unfortunately when it comes to headers, it's kind of a hit or miss situation. And this one definitely did not hit the mark. So we've got a few modifications to do to each side of the header and then we'll get them permanently installed and then we can fire up the engine. But I do want to talk real quick about a few things that I took care of kind of off camera just because they're not worth showing you the process, but at least it's kind of worth mentioning. Uh, the first thing that we did is I got the headlights and the marker lights on the front and I have all the bracketry and stuff reinstalled on the core support. And even though it doesn't look like it, we're pretty much 85% done on the front end. The bumper is just off because I'm waiting on a set of fog lights. One of them was kind of smashed out when I bought the truck. Um, so not a huge deal. These are pretty easy to switch out. They're easier to switch out with the bumper off. That's just kind of why I haven't put it back on yet. Uh, but other than that, once the bumper's on, the grill just clicks in. There's like four little fasteners on there and the front end will be done. Underneath the hood, I've got the coolant expansion tank in. We've got the heater lines in. Um, all the wiring is done. I have the alternator reinstalled. Uh, you remember last time I was waiting on the throttle body to be cleaned out. This was like super nasty and gunky. And when you have a bunch of buildup on the throttle blade, it actually can affect your idle just a little bit because it'll block some of the airflow. So whenever the throttle plate is closed or near closed, even though it seems like an insignificant amount, like just you know a thin layer of dirt can actually affect how it runs. So we've got it 100% cleaned up, plugged back in, and everything is ready to rock and roll on the throttle body. Now, the last thing worth mentioning, I think, is the starter. Now, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you might have noticed that if there's a part that's just a little bit questionable, well, it doesn't go back on the truck, it gets corrected. And in this case, it definitely would have been easier just to buy a replacement starter. Um, and the whole reason why I was even messing with it is because of how greasy and grimy it was. This engine had such a bad oil leak that it actually leaked engine oil inside the starter. It was all over the windings and stuff like that. And there's even a little bit of grit and stuff on the inside. So. Uh, starters are fairly well sealed up, but when you just have a constant stream of oil kind of dripping on it, it definitely needed attention. It probably would have worked for a long time, but that's not how I operate. So we completely disassembled it. We pulled the gear set out. It is a gear reduction starter. I put everything in the parts washer. I cleaned it up and then completely reassembled it with all new grease and obviously no gunk and dirt in there. Um, I kind of enjoy that type of work as well. Like electrical stuff is something that not a lot of people take the time to do. Yes, it would be so much quicker and easier just to go get a replacement starter. But I mean, nowadays they're probably like what, 170, 180 bucks. And well, it just took me about an hour or two of time and I got it cleaned up. And in my opinion, it's just as good as new. There's plenty of material left on the brushes. The solenoid seems to be making good contact. So anyway, cleaned the inside and the outside of the starter and threw it back into place. And then I installed the headers. Um, I mentioned last time uh, what brand they were. And normally they make a pretty good header, but I actually did read a few reviews on these where people had similar issues to what I'm experiencing. And it's, it's not a big deal, but it definitely is annoying. And if you bought these set of headers intending to just throw them on and go, well, you'd be out of luck. The major issue is the placement of the O2 sensor bunks. On both the driver's side and the passenger side, it's not gonna work out of the box. The driver's side is like a complete no-go. Basically, the O2 sensor is mounted straight up on the top of the pipe and it is gonna crash directly into the floorboard and there's no way you can even install it. On the passenger side, the O2 sensor is mounted on the frame rail side of the header at a horizontal angle. And it will actually go in, but it's so close to the frame, basically the wires are gonna to have to do a very sharp 90 degree bend upward and then kind of go out to the side to plug in where they belong. And in my opinion, that's just also not the correct way to do it. So what we're gonna do is we'll pull the headers off the truck. I've got a few marks that I made underneath with them installed. We're gonna put three new O2 sensor bungs in place, two on the driver's side, one of them for the factory narrow band sensor and one of them for my wide band gauge that we're gonna use when we tune the truck and just one to replace the sensor or the bung rather in the passenger side header. So 
Um, after we get that done, then we're going to attach a V-band flange on the back of the header. And I'm even going to shorten up just a little bit on the end simply because of all the bends and stuff that we're going to have to make. And once we do all that, we'll permanently install the headers with gaskets, throw the spark plugs in and the plug wires, and then we should be able to fire the truck up. So let's get to work. So if I had it my way, probably I would just try to find a set of headers with no bungs in them at all, and that way I could put them in exactly the right place because it's just frustrating to have to go back and fix stuff like this. But that's all right, it's part of building trucks, and I understand, you know, if you have a part that fits a wide range of trucks, like let's say these are designed to fit 99 all the way up to like 2014s, then sure, maybe the O2 bung location would work for some of those trucks, but it definitely did not work for this one. So if I could get a blank header, that would you know, save me a lot of time, but this is the next best thing. So basically, instead of just putting a, a plug in, because I've got a bunch of these lying around, which I could have done, um, the problem with that though is both of these bungs would be pretty close to each other and this one would have kind of been up on this crimped part of the collector. So instead of doing that, in my opinion, it just looks cleaner to get some uh, more stainless exhaust tube. I cut a patch out, filled the hole, and then I'm going to put the new bung in the original spot except, so this would be the original place, and then we're going to roll it uphill just a little bit. This one was actually pretty close and basically the wiring now will be able to do a straight shot right to the top of the frame rather than when it was down here, it would just kind of have a sharp 90 degree bend which could kink the wire. So um, this is what we're gonna do and just kind of figured I'd show you guys this. Uh, this is from Stainless Brothers, I think. It is a coped O2 bung and it fits perfectly on a three inch tube like that. So there's no gaps where normally if you get one of these that are flat, well, that's kind of how it would sit. And this just makes for a much nicer weld if you have zero gaps all the way around. So those are pretty handy. I'll put a link in the description below. Now what I've got to do is I'll put the header back in the truck and I'll just take my Sharpie and I'll make a center point um, for the new sensor. And then we'll drill it and weld in the new bung, add the V-band and this can go back in the truck for good. So I have the passenger side header complete and as soon as everything cools off we can throw it back in the truck for good you know with brand new gaskets, new hardware and I'll put the spark plugs in that side and so the passenger side of the engine will be complete and then we'll have to repeat on the driver side although that one is going to take a little bit more work. Now I will say this about these particular headers other than having to move the O2 sensors around they do fit pretty good for the most part. I haven't messed around with the plug wires yet. That's always another area that you want to look out for to make sure the plug wires have plenty of clearance because you know, if you're burning spark plug boots, to me that just totally ruins a set of headers. You want a good set that has plenty of clearance and you can use you know, just a good spark plug wire that won't have to require any custom bending or you know, 
Anyway, I hate messing around with plug boots and I think they'll fit okay. Um, the driver side header, I will say there is one tube that does come pretty darn close to the frame rail and we might have to massage that one with the ball peen hammer, but I'll kind of update you guys as we move along. Uh, when I weld these together, I always, working with a V-band on a header, I take a piece of DOM tube and just kind of clamp it in the vise and it sticks up just, you know, about to the collector in here and it makes a nice way to hold the V-band because when you're welding, it's good to have it kind of at an upright angle when these are laying on the table they're just really difficult to get to um, and another thing i always clamp together both halves of the clamp and i tighten it down real good just because it kind of prevents warping by having both halves tightly you know held together and by having that extra material in there it kind of helps as a heat sink to pull some heat away from the very first clamp that we're welding so uh, happy with how that one turned out we've got i shortened everything by two inches just to make this first transition a little bit easier and you can see here we have the o2 sensor moved not by much like the old center sensor was down here and now we're up there so it might have you know clocked uphill by like 10 or 15 degrees but that's just enough to allow the wire to kind of pass on top of the frame rail uh, one more trick i'll show you real quick I took an old uh, garbage O2 sensor from something and I just cut the end of it off so I can put it into the bung and use that as a position because a Sharpie marker, you can kind of get the general position, but when you actually put the O2 sensor in a bung, you can line it up on the pipe exactly where it needs to go and you'll know, you know how much clearance you have for the wiring and everything. And that's going to be ultra important on the driver's side because I don't have a lot of room between the floorboard, the drive shaft, and where that O2 sensor needs to go. So anyway, uh, as soon as this cools down, we will strip it apart and install it back in the truck. Alrighty, so the modifications are done on the driver's side header. Now we can reinstall it in the truck for good. Uh, you know, get the plugs and the wires installed on the driver's side, and then we can fire this thing up and hear how it sounds with open headers. Because, you know, as a car guy, you kind of have to do that. You can't build a truck with headers on it and not start it up at least once. And also, this will just be the first fire up after doing all the engine work. Um, I guess you can't really install a set of headers without getting out the hammer at least once. And I did modify the driver's side header tube right there. As you can see, just a little kind of smack here and there. Um, the part of the frame that kind of holds the front differential goes right in this area. They actually fit without touching, but 
uh, it probably only had like an eighth of an inch of room right here and with the engine rocking back and forth when it runs i figured it would probably hit so not a huge deal i just kind of got the hammer out smacked it a little bit and made just enough room uh, i hate doing this to a new set of headers but the only consolation we have is you know that engine masters episode where they did the dyno test by smashing the headers just to kind of see if it would hurt power any which really you know, smacking a header just a little bit to make room for a plug wire or for a frame like this is going to have no measurable difference in power loss just because you had to dent it. So that's good, but it's also like, well, you got a brand new set of headers. You don't really want to have to do that. Although these headers, they're, they're kind of in the middle of the road in terms of budget. It's not like they're a $1,200 set. Uh, but they're also a little better than a $200 set. But anyway, um, the modifications are done. Here's kind of what we did on the collector area. Um, this is the original location. As you can see, I kind of plugged it off again. And this is an absolute must for these headers in this type of truck. There's absolutely no way this O2 sensor location would have worked. We just rolled it inboard a little bit and slid it up ahead. And it still has plenty of room for the front drive shaft that goes right here. Um, this one is obviously not required. That's for a wide band. We'll use that for tuning. And then the V bands, I just love using these anytime I'm doing exhaust work because they make servicing everything so simple. One bolt, you pop the clamp and the whole thing comes right off and they generally don't leak. So for now, let's get this header back on the truck. So I know there are mixed opinions on what I'm doing here, uh, putting anti-seize on the threads of a spark plug. I've always done it, I've never had any problems. To me, it makes it easier to remove the spark plug later on. Uh, some people swear that you just gotta put them in dry. I just, or even use like the nickel anti-seize. Now I do need to clean up that little bit right there, but as long as you get it on the threads, not on the seat, I've always had no problems. Okay, so now I'm just starting to get frustrated because these little problems, they just kind of keep adding up. And I will say I have installed pace setter headers on these trucks before without any of these problems. So if I could go back in time, I think I just would have preferred to buy those. Uh, the O2 sensor thing, I was kind of willing to overlook that because I sort of knew about it before I even purchased these headers. Um, the V-band thing, well, yeah, that's my doing. I wanted a V-band flange, so that's what we're gonna run. Uh, not a big deal. I'm willing to put the extra work in for that. Uh, denting the header tubes, I, I was like 50-50. I'm like, I'm not surprised I had to do it, but at the same time, I was hoping I wouldn't have to. And then finally, this last issue is just, it's really annoying. And it's, once again, not a deal killer, but these little issues, they just keep adding up and adding up. And it just, it's like that old saying, if you want something done right, well, you're just gonna have to do it yourself. And I definitely want it done right, so I know that means I'm putting in the work. Uh, on the driver's side here, the plug boots, they're a little bit tighter. Like I'll show you if I can get it to focus right there. Um, I just kind of, my mic is caught there. I just trimmed back the silicone a little bit because it would have barely, barely touched on the primary tube. Um, but I am going to go ahead and purchase some of those Excel ceramic boots just because I think that's going to be the best long-term solution. Even though these will fit, they're definitely going to burn up in you know, a couple thousand miles. So I've got the right plug wires on the way, but there is one thing I had to fix to even get the spark plug boot on the spark plug in the first place between the second and third port back. And this is actually true on both sides. Basically, the problem is um, where the angle of the spark plug kind of comes out like that. Um, it was just hitting right into the flange. And the reason is because this is sort of like a symmetrical flange, normally on an LS, like this bolt is low and this bolt is high, which means the flange can only go on one way. But if you oval them out when they're building these headers, they just grab a flange and throw it in the fixture and weld it up. And they don't have to be concerned with what is right side up and upside down. But the problem with the shape of the flange is because the spark plug is kind of like right in this area here, the boot actually would interfere with that flange right there. So um, I tried to overlook it on this side by just taking some pliers and squishing that aluminum shell 
on the plug boot, which worked, but then on the driver's side, it was much closer and it actually wouldn't do that at all. So I took the header out on the passenger side just because if I'm fixing one, I'm definitely gonna fix both. And it only took me like 10 minutes with the grinder just to kind of, you know, relieve that area right there. Now I've got plenty of clearance for the plug boot. And also the reason why I did this is because I don't know how big or small the boots are on those ceramic plug wires that I am gonna have. So once again, it's like, it's definitely frustrating. I'm certainly capable of doing the work. That's not a big deal, but it's just like, you really think that these days you could actually buy a product and have it work without having to do any modifications. Uh, maybe that's too much to expect, I don't know. Um, I know these are made from a great quality material. It's a good quality stainless. They're supposed to be a little bit thicker than some other headers, but I'm just frustrated, that's all. So um, I've taken it up, up enough time yapping now. So I'm just gonna throw this on, throw the radiator in real quick. And the very next thing you'll see is me trying to start up this truck. Alrighty, so I started the truck up about two hours ago and since then I've just been kind of messing around with the tuning side of things, trying to get this thing to just start up and idle on its own without having to press the throttle pedal because as you know, you've changed a lot of stuff in here, namely the camshaft that really throws the tune out of whack. And so I'm probably gonna have to call in a favor on this one to be honest, because I'm not a tuner. Like once I have a truck that'll start up and idle, I can use the software to kind of dial in the VE table and get the air fuel ratios where they're supposed to be. But it's all those little intricacies of like, you know, startup and idle and you know, the throttle response where sometimes the throttle will hang or sometimes it'll drop down too quickly. All that stuff is kind of way above my head. So. I'll, whenever we get to that point, I'll kind of show you guys the process of getting this thing running. But like I said, I'll probably call in a favor, or hire somebody to actually, who, who knows what they're doing more than I do. Um, so anyway, in terms of the headers, everything, once we modified it, everything fit really good. Um, plenty of room around the spark plugs, at least now that we ground out those two ports. Um, I will have to build an exhaust. That's probably going to happen next just because this thing is so loud. It's you know, it's kind of deafening inside this garage. It's just like a big echo chamber. Um, and I'm sorry, my mind is going a million different directions because I'm already thinking about what I got to do next. And I've totally forgotten about everything that we just did. So uh, the truck starts, that's like the major milestone because we had everything taken apart. Uh, it did take a second for oil pressure to build up. I don't really have like an oil pre-luber for these LS engines. Probably should have one, but I just, I started it up and about 10 seconds later, we have oil pressure. So I don't think we're gonna cause any sort of damage because we do have assembly lubricant on everything and that ought to protect it for that first little bit. But anyway, we have great oil pressure after it fires up. I think it's like 70, 75 PSI, uh, at least that's what the gauge says. No leaks, no weird noises or anything like that. So all that work we did tearing this engine apart seems to have worked. So once we get it tuned and some exhaust on it and the cooling fans in, we can hit the road. So I do wanna say thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Um, do those three things for me as always. Drop a comment, click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we're getting closer to dyno day guys. So wish me luck and let me know how much power you think this 4.8 is gonna make. See you again soon.